Vito di Giorgio, Italian pronunciation, modifier letter vertical line V, modifier letter triangular colon 2D, modifier letter vertical line D, Latin small letter as Ord, Latin small letter as O, March 19th, 1880, May 13th, 1922 was an Italian born crime boss based in Los Angeles. Originally from Palermo, Sicily, D. Giorgio lived most of his life as a grocer in New Orleans, where he was also an active black handler. While he lived in Los Angeles, he was known as a wealthy food importer. He survived two shootings, only to be killed while visiting Chicago in 1922. Early life and New Orleans born to Filippo and Giuseppe D. Giorgio in Palermo, Sicily, in 1880. D. Giorgio came to the United States around 1904. After a brief stay in New York City with his reported cousin, he moved to New Orleans. There, he married Maria Cristoforo on April 23, 1909, and joined the community of organized criminals. He was acknowledged as a cousin and a friend to New York City Mafia boss Giuseppe Morello, and with this connection became a leading black handler. It is not known when he joined the Honored Society, he may have been a member in Sicily. Using the alias of Joseph Coronia, he was arrested in 1908 for extortion. He was the leader of a black hand group that sent an extortion letter demanding money from a leading Italian grocer. He signed the letter, King of the Mafia. He and his associates were freed after a short stay in jail due to lack of evidence. Further investigation showed that D. Giorgio killed a man, Joseph Campis Cheno, in self-defense about a year earlier. He had used the name Coronia at that time too. In 1914 he became the owner of a grocery and saloon that was sold to him by the brother of the original proprietor. It had been a successful business and the press did not understand why the owner would sell it. It is likely that the owner, Henry Schiambra, was forced to sell. Schlemra's brother Anthony, the original owner, was murdered in 1912 by an intruder while he was in his home sleeping. Even for a powerful mafioso life could be dangerous. D. Giorgio was shot and almost fatally wounded by an assassin on May 13, 1916. He recovered, but an associate who was in the saloon with him did not fare so well and died soon after. One of D. Giorgio's men was captured after he fired at the shooter and was found to have a letter from Frank Sicola of St. Louis. Sicola was a St. Louis black hand leader who was shot and killed in 1922. This is evidence of the connections early mafiosi had, a network that remained unknown to the public until the 1957 Appalachian meeting. Four years later D. Giorgio was alleged to have masterminded a robbery to some acquaintances that led to the death of Dallas Colmes, an independence restaurant owner, on May 7, 1921. This resulted in the infamous hanging of the six men responsible in 1924. Life in Los Angeles in 1920 D. Giorgio and his family were renting a house at 1017 East 21st Street in central Los Angeles. Nicola Gentile, who was a mafia leader in Pittsburgh and several other cities, noted that he was feared throughout California. Nevertheless, D. Giorgio continued to have enemies and was shot a second time, on July 18th. 1921, after returning home from a trip to the beach with his family. He was shot in the leg and recovered. D. Giorgio, described as a wealthy fruit dealer, and his wife both told LAPD officers that he had no enemies and did not know who shot him or why. Apparently not long after this incident, Gentile, who noted D. Giorgio's leg injury, visited him in the home of Rosario Desimone. Gentile was on a mission to remove a death sentence placed on his compare, Vincenzo Chiapetta. Gentile did not know the reason for the death sentence on Chiapetta, only that it concerned an unresolved issue between the two of them. Chiapetta was one of the men arrested with D. Giorgio in 1908, and was now a member of the Kansas City crime family. Before meeting D. Giorgio, Gentile transferred his membership from the Colashiro crime family in Brooklyn, Salvatore Maranzano's predecessor, to the San Francisco Mafia organization.
From there arrangements were made to meet with the Di Giorgio. When they did meet, it was cordial and respectful. In the end, Gentile was successful in convincing Di Giorgio to drop the death sentence, and a letter of explanation was sent to the Kansas City leader Paolo Di Giovanni. Death nothing is heard of Di Giorgio until May 13, 1922. He and a friend from New Orleans, Vincenzo James Camaradolo Cascio, had been traveling the country, most recently in Buffalo, New York. Shortly before their visit, a number of organized crime figures and bootleggers were killed in the Buffalo area. From there they went to Chicago. While the purpose of their meeting is unknown, it is likely that they met with Chicago Mafia leader Michel Merlo, who was also president of the Chicago chapter of the Uni 1 Siciliana. On May 13, D. Giorgio, Lo Cascio, and an unidentified third man went to a barber shop in Pool Hall on Larrabee Street. While D. Giorgio was in a barber's chair for a shave and a haircut, and Locascio was playing a game of billiards, two or three gunmen entered the shop, walked up to both men from behind and shot and killed them both. Their deaths were reported not only in Chicago, but in New Orleans and even by the New York Times. However, none of the Los Angeles papers reported on the killings. Legacy When Vito Di Giorgio was killed in Chicago, the rest of his family had already returned to New Orleans. His wife struggled and was arrested for bootlegging a year later. She died in 1933. Rosario Desimone succeeded Di Giorgio as the Los Angeles boss, but appears to have stepped down in the mid-1920s. Michelle Merlo, known as the peacemaker among the warring Chicago bootlegging factions died of cancer in 1924. Paolo Di Giovanni died in 1929. Vincenzo Chiappetta relocated to St. Louis, where he died in 1970 at the age of 83. Nick Gentile fled the country in 1937 to avoid prosecution for drug trafficking and remained in Italy for the rest of his life. He lived to be in his 90s. References Biomente, John V. Jr. Spirit of Vengeance, Nativism and Louisiana Justice, 1921-1924, Baton Rouge and London, Louisiana State University Press, 1986, Flynn, William J. The Barrel Mystery, New York, James A. McCann Company, 1919, Gentile, Nick, with Felice Chilanti, Vita di Capo Mafia, Rome, Editori Riuniti, 1963. Warner, Richard N. The First Mafia Boss of Los Angeles? The Mystery of Vito Di Giorgio, 1880-1922. On the Spot Journal, Summer 2008, 4654. Warner, Richard N. The First Crime Boss of Los Angeles? Informer, 3-3, July, 2010, 415. HTTPS colon slash slash www dot script dot com slash doc slash three four four five five seven three nine slash informer dash v zero three n three dash two zero one zero dash July New Orleans Louisiana Marriage Records Index eighteen thirty one nineteen twenty five v thirty one p one hundred and two Vito de Giorgio documented incorrectly as Digingio. Married Maria Cristoforo April 23, 1909, submitted by Frank Policy. New Orleans, Louisiana Death Records Index, 1804-1949, v. 184, p. 641. D.O.D. May 13, 1922, submitted by Frank Policy. World War I Draft Registration Cards, 1917-1918. Date of birth March 19, 1880, Occupation Grocer, Residence 2301 Dolphin Street, New Orleans, Louisiana, which is near address as found on the 1920 microsecond census, New Orleans, Louisiana, submitted by Frank Policy, U.S. Federal Census, Orleans Parish, New Orleans, Louisiana, 2309 Dolphin Street, Head of Household Vito de Giorgio, 2nd Precinct, SD1, ED130, Ward 8, 
Sheet 11A, submitted by Frank Policy. External links Death of Vito Di Giorgio.